All right, what's up, guys? You see this bearded guy over here, and if you don't recognize him, I don't know where you've been lately. Almost, literally almost 100,000 on TikTok, killing it on Instagram. Stephen J120 Volts. And Stephen, I'm going to start out right away. How the heck did you get that name? Because I know it's a mouthful. <laughs> so when I first started making TikToks, I didn't know what topic I was going to use. So I'm Stephen J because my father's Stephen G. So I just took Stephen J and then added whatever the channel was. Stephen J Politics, Stephen J Random, Stephen J whatever. And then when my electrician one took off, it was 120 volts because I put the 120 because I don't do commercial. So, and after it took off, I've been afraid to change it because I don't know what How that would do, do to change yeah, my yeah. name in the midstream. So Steven, I mean, obviously you and I met for the first time at Nika and I always said it even till this day, it was so crazy. It was so busy. And I, honestly, I'm 52. We just said how old you are. You can tell everybody if you want, but we're on the older seven. generation and I'm not on social media like everybody else is. I'm not that hip dude that knows how to do all the, the crazy stuff. In fact, off air, we just talked about how good you are on TikTok. I talked to a couple of older guys on Instagram and I still don't know Instagram. Steven, uh, mad electrician, a friend of both of ours, kind of coaches me on what yeah. to do on Instagram. So what got you into it? Because you just mentioned politics and some other stuff. So tell us your niche, your background, and how you became, like, what do you think? I know because I watch your content. It's freaking phenomenal. You bring the best of, like, two or three different worlds together. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what do you think your big success was? And when was your big success? How long have you been doing it? And, and what took off? I mean, what got you, like, what got you to that big Oh my gosh, I just got a viral video. So uh, basically I was, I'm bad at typing, lots of typos. So instead of typing, when I was arguing online, instead of typing a message, I would just make a video. And then when people say, that's not true, that's not true. Instead of saying, yeah, nah, -uh, I would just make a test to show them. And Love then it. there was one guy that did a viral video. I mean, he did a video about this is a shock hazard. This would kill you. And what he was doing was not dangerous. He was mm -hmm. just lying. So I did the same thing, but looking more dangerous, and it took off. I ended up yeah. taking that video down because if you didn't do it exactly as I did, you would get hurt. But right. it was more to just prove, disprove him because he was scaring people, I thought, about be, doing, being electricians. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's dangerous, but sometimes if you make it sound too dangerous, you scare the young kids away. So sure. I, was trying to show, I was trying to show that it can, things can be done safely once your training's done. But instead, it came off as jackass. But... It got me followers. So I took it down right. and then started trying to make better videos. But the idea of don't just argue back and forth. If you have something to say, build a demonstration that proves your point and it ends the argument. I uh, love it. Absolutely. I, used I used to do a lot of flat earth debunking back in the day, like arguing against the flat earthers with experiments. But that got me no followers. It was <laughs> it was that electrician video because it just shocked so many people, you know, pun intended, that I wasn't getting hurt doing right. what I was doing. I was just holding live wires with my bare hands and holding the volt tick in the other hand. And uh, I love it. Took off. I love but. it. Yeah. And so uh, you have a day job as an electrician. We know that. I know that. Uh, I don't know if your audience ever know that. Tell us a little bit. Well, let's go back to TikTok really quick. How long have you been doing TikTok? Like in the electrical. So the electrician, the electrician one actually is just a year. Wow, so amazing. that viral video I just talked about. The viral video I just talked about was February twenty sixth of twenty three. Wow. But as amazing. far as as far as making videos and in arguing the other stuff. Probably a couple years before that, but okay. none of them ever more, more than a few right. of right. you. That's, that's inspiring for everybody that's watching out there. I say everybody should be on social media. Unfortunately, unfortunately, everyone's going to be on social media. And that's the key that I like about you. You're debunking stuff. You're actually showing stuff. So it's funny you said that. A lot of people will accuse me of talking too much, Steve. So I got to make sure you get all your points in, okay? I'm always the one that's <laughs> usually. But here's the funny part. And, and I'm like you. You just said it. You're like, you get something that you don't like and you go bolt, you know, you call the BS on it and you show the video. You actually are putting, yeah. you're putting actions where your mouth is. You're not just saying, like we just talked about, three-way switches, you have to have a neutral in every location. That's just BS that somebody heard, but they didn't go to the code book to learn. Yep. I do the same thing on my end where I'm like, I'm teaching you, you know, I told you why I have a stack of, of dollars, but I'm, I'm teaching you how to make this but I'm not just talking. I'm actually taking you on the field to my job site and I'm walking you through the job and I'm telling you how I did it, the mistakes that I made and et cetera, et cetera. I think that's resonated huge because when I watch your videos, I'm like fabriclasted that one you did with that light bulb that's got the battery that you just touch. And how does it know yeah. that there's like, you wouldn't think about that. And you're making people think about it. I made a comment about electric boom. The guy that does electric, is that electric boom? That guy that's yep, the crazy guy. Boom. 
And, yep. and you bring electric boom. I know. I, and I said, I hope I'm not insulting you. And you're like, no, that's actually no, awesome. Brilliant. Because he does the entertainment part with the actual experiment part. You do it in a way that I can actually sit and think it's not a joke. Because again, his, and I love it. He's got a lot of followers, but he's strictly entertainment. I love how you bring the entertainment with the actual knowledge and the facts right in. And then you level up. And I think that's been a big reason why you're so successful and you're going to continue to be. So that's very cool. So tell us, tell us the handles, all your handles. So I know you're on YouTube. We talked about that. And we want to make sure if you're watching this, head over, like literally as soon as you're done, go to Steven's YouTube channel. What's the handle on that one? At, at what? Same things. Uh, same. Steven J 120 volts. All, it's the same that on TikTok, Amazon, and uh, not Amazon, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, so, makes it easy. I, I, I don't think you need to change name, it. But I'm scared. No, I think you're done, bro. <laughs> yeah. I think you're there. I think you're going to be known as that. It's just going to suck when you put it on a shirt and it's like 12 feet long, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my, my, my niece did make it. My, my niece made a shirt. She made a shirt for me. It came out pretty cool. I love it. I want to yeah, see I it. I have to get it over there. I can't yeah. wait to Wanna see it. Go get it? <laughs> so I can't wear it. But she had, it. she had that sense. Oh, me that is actually pretty awesome, man. That's very cool. Yep. She made that on her phone and then had it sent to me. Nice. Yana sent that. But it yep. doesn't fit you, so and you that, can't wear it in the videos. No, I'm too big. I'm, I'm, I need right. to lose a little bit. All right. All right. Hey, you know what? Um, so uh, tell us kind of about your experience. You said you're mostly residential. What's your experience like? Oh, you're over in Maine. If people don't realize that, Stephen's over in Maine. Tell us what the licensing like. Are you just an electrician? Are you a contractor? What's your goals there? So I uh, I started right at 18. I did it with my dad and uncle growing up as a teenager. I became my full-time job at 18. Um, I tried about, that was in 1995. I tried a handful of times to run a business. I just couldn't get it to go well. I'm just not mm -hmm. that organized. So, and then it was about 2011. I decided to officially give up running my own business. And I went and got a job with the government doing maintenance. Awesome. So it was residential for the first, whatever, 15 years that is. And then in 2011, I went with the government to an industrial maintenance at night from six at night to six in the morning, seven days on, seven days off. Wow. So then I have my other group where I can continue my electrical business, but because it no longer pays the bills, if I mismanage it, right, it's fine. It's just, it's just money and working for people I like and doing sure. jobs I like. Yeah, that's but, awesome. Yeah, so, so yeah, definitely mostly do? residential. I love old houses. Old houses, if I could just wire, rewire old houses and fish wires and snake wires all day long, I'd be happy and troubleshoot old circuits, but... Unfortunately, Very can't just cool. do that. Now, remind me, is uh, Doug and Josh in Maine, uh, Lumen Brothers? Did you meet them uh, at Nika? I don't know of it. I don't think I met them. If They might oh, be, but I don't think I met them. There's a modern electrician I was, I was podcast. Starstruck at, yeah. I, I was starstruck at Nika. I was, I was just totally flabbergasted to be in the room with those people. And it, I wish the, the weekend flew by. I wish I could go back and do it again and not be so overwhelmed. Oh, uh, let me tell you. So, if, yeah, if, I remember if, if it, I met. If we could do it again, you and me would be hanging out a lot more. Trust me. But, but hopefully we get you to NECA in uh, 2024 in Philly. We're already working on some big things with NECA on that and with some of the brands. It's going to be really cool. So uh, so uh, do you like do you like work? Do you have a lot of time to kind of like look at, see what your next project is? Like you come up with stuff. For me, like I, honestly, this past two weeks, I've had creator's block. It happens. I'm just kind of like, there's things in life, you know, family, we're both family, family uh, men that we know family takes precedent. But how do you cre create that? What do you come up with the next idea? How do you do that? And, and how often do you do it? Because you post quite often. Yeah, so it usually it's, I'm triggered by a comment that makes me want to make it. Mm -hmm. So that I think that's why my, sometimes my uh, my content looks a little, a little ADHD and scattered because I can't fake it. If I it has to be something I'm excited to do, excited to build. So there'll be a comment that springs an idea in my head, and I got to make it right away. I can't do this evergreen kind of backlog of stuff, you know, because right. then you can tell in the videos that if I'm just going through the motions because I want to make a video, I mean, I think I need to make the video. I, it looks like it, you know? Yeah. So usually somebody says something and there's a not, uh, yeah, huh, back and forth kind of thing. And I'm like, well, this is how I'll prove it, you yeah. know? So I, I just go and do it. Um, and then every once in a while, there's just silly stuff that I just kind of do. Like, you know, I want to burn a hot dog with electrical and find out how many ants a hot dog draws, That's like no value it. to it, just goofiness. Right. I love but, it. I love the fact that you don't have to open you just getting that camera on and you're doing it for me. It's I'm a very ad hoc person when I'm talking about what I know I'm talking about, which is running the electrical business, marketing and all that stuff. Of course, it just comes naturally. I look at the camera the whole time. In fact, at Nika, they called me the one take wonder because if I know what I'm talking about, I just I don't need any takes like let's do it. Uh, I think you're blessed in that sense, too, where you get on that camera and you just know it. So what's coming up next? I mean, what's your next goals? Uh, I know you and I talked about really getting over to YouTube, but really vertical is kind of the issue for you to get to. It's not vertical, but horizontal. Yeah, I, 
Um, but what's next? Where do you see yourself going? Another thing I want to mention, and I want to mention this because there's going to be brands watching this. And if they're not, I'm going to be sending it to them. But like, what's your, what's your goal at the end of the day? Because you know, you're putting this stuff out for free. That's just great. We all do it for free, but also your thoughts on monetizing and letting your channel know, because again, a lot of people accuse me, Oh, you're just a salesman. Yeah. I'm trying to sell you an investment. And if this doesn't 10 times your value, if you don't get 10 times what you paid me in, in money back or in value, I'll give your money back hands down. Um, are there things that you're thinking about growing the channel, doing things? Because again, as we get older, we're thinking, how are we going to make money off this? Or how are we going to make this more of a full-time thing? Is that going through your brain right now? Or what's, it's just having fun over 2024. What's your, what's your thoughts uh, there as, as a channel? Well, definitely having fun, but I kind of, a lot of people will ask, how come I don't teach? How come I don't teach? I get that a lot in the comments. Why yeah. don't I work at a place teaching? I don't think, again, going back to the idea, I couldn't fake it. If you give me a curriculum and you tell me today, you have to do box fill to the same 19 kids all season long I, I would it would i wouldn't like it right so i wish there was a way i could link up with apprentices that had a specific problem and i give them an hour of my time and we solve that problem together of something that they're not able to get from their journeyman because maybe their journeyman doesn't care or no. their journeyman doesn't know and their their school teachers deal with 19 kids in a curriculum if i could somehow hook up with these apprentices i said kids you know the apprentices can be in their 40s nowadays there's no that's awesome because a lot of people right. like hit rock bottom for bad decisions and now they're rebuilding their life but yeah. so like a third or fourth year apprentice if i could somehow link up with them um that would be more productive and more rewarding than just posting the videos to sure ether, you know sure so maybe, i just don't know how like to a... network that out yeah, maybe like a paid membership club that once a week you get online with anybody that has questions. I know I have a good friend, Stephen Cavallaris, electricaltime.com, and uh, he's growing. He's a Mike Holt certified trained instructor, the only one that's uh, a trained instructor and teacher. Like he can teach the the teachers kind of thing in uh, New York State. And he's always looking for the best way to connect to his subscribers and the people and have access to him. I guess the thing for you, though, is it's the trade-off. Like, I would love to have access with you because you know things that I don't, for example. How do you do that and monetize it in a way that you can actually make a living? Is It's a tough one, and I, and I feel your pain on that one. Maybe it would be just like, yeah, yeah. like you said, maybe uh, coaching is one thing, but then our apprentice is going to be able to pay that for coaching. I don't know. But a, but a membership, maybe, just to be in that and be able to have access once a week where you go, all right, for the next hour, everybody that's in my membership, come on, ask me any questions. I'll tell you, I'll teach you or whatever. So that's pretty interesting. I'm, uh, that's something I'm going to look forward to as you, as you kind of develop that. And what I do, I'm trying, I need a little bit more space is once I build an experiment, I, I'm now no longer taking it apart. I used to keep repurposing the pieces. Now when I build an experiment, I save it. So if I was to do that membership thing on a live, all the experience from all my videos would still exist in the room I'm in, just in storage. And if somebody had a question, hey, can you go over the three-way again? Ah, I could pull that out and, right. and reuse it right, right. right then and there. So that's kind of the dream is to get somehow get more one-on-one -on -one without being limited to a classroom of just 19 kids. So you want to do teaching, you want to do stuff like that. I mean, you're open to brands calling you. What kind of brand do you think would be ideal for someone like your channel? Well, if, if it's, if I'm tutoring kids, I think as you were speaking, that's the word that came to my mind that online tutoring would be what I was thinking. Yeah. I could be showing kids how to use specific tools, the proper tools to use to match by code and apprentices are underutilizing it, like torquing equipment properly. If I, you know, something like that would be a good, I could show that video on the right way to use it because maybe they have an old timer journeyman who's like, ah, we don't need that. So, or you that, just that, can't you know, ask. You just can't equipment. ask. Yeah, you just can't ask because you feel stupid or you might think, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just know someone there who's an apprentice who they're telling me that they ask their apprentice questions. I mean, they're asking their journeyman questions and he's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like the, the, the journeyman doesn't want to get into the debate and the discussion to give the kid a better, deeper understanding. He just right. wants the kid to put black, black, white to white so we can go finish the job and get to lunch. And uh, the apprentice doesn't want that. You only get four years to learn. That's and it. then once you're licensed, you're working. You yeah, know, we all learn continuously our whole life, but those first four years is when your job is to learn. And you've got to be hooked up with a good company and a good journeyman that respects that and yeah. helps you and, and mentors you. I love that passion, man. I love that. Passion. Not a lot of people have it. And not a lot of people have it that are bringing it to social media like you are. So I appreciate that. I mean, it's it's huge. Well, listen, I don't want to take up all your time. We're going to do an official podcast later. I'm actually praying that this thing's recording because we're just doing it on our phones. Who knows? But uh, hopefully it does. <laughs> So everybody knows how to reach you. I'll tag it down below, up above. You, just to let you know, man, I appreciate you. You gave me one shout out and I think I got a hundred subscribers in that one day. Can you believe that? That's how much influence wow. you have, brother. So keep doing what you're doing for sure. I'm a big fan. 
Uh, I can't wait to tell everybody how you're going to get involved in our event. It's pretty much Electricians Give Back. And Stephen's going to get involved because he's going to have a whole segment, whether he likes knows it or not. Uh, 15 minutes, <laughs> it's all him telling you and teaching you stuff. So that's a great one. You know, you could do the apprentice section. You could do a bunch of stuff. Uh, we'll we'll talk about a tool brand that will sponsor your section too and then hopefully come and join on board. For all of you guys that are watching my channel, I appreciate you guys being here. Click my links down below. We've hooked up, Stephen. I don't know if you know, but now we are promoting. We're officially hooked up with Next Insurance because I'm a big proponent. Everybody's got to get insured if you're doing work out there. Don't be doing those side Absolutely. jobs because if you burn that house down, you're going to be liable. Your family is going to be hating you and you'll probably end up in ruin. So get insured do it the right way. And of course, we're all in with Jobber this year uh, it, because it's the lowest price point. There's no excuses for my subscribers to get into field software. So we've hooked up with Jobber. Those are just some of the new ones below. I appreciate you, man. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And uh, just, you know, you're a friend of the channel, so feel free to come on board. And oh, and one thing, everybody, if you're watching this and you're friends with us, Share your posts, especially on Instagram. I, I, I will repost. A lot of people will, won't share your video. Like, you know, I think it's just tag us or forward it to us so that we can post it on our stories. That's a big one. I know you probably know more about that. Or actually, Stephen, Matt, Electrician will tell us more about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely got to learn to do more of that stuff. Yeah, it's funny. And, and again, he's been a big influence for you as of me on Instagram, right? He got you on Instagram kind oh, of. Oh, God, he saved, he saved my Instagram. I was stuck at 500 followers until he gave me a little pep talk. And then... Uh, I changed a few things that he told me to do. And I went from 500 to 10,000 followers in like nine days, maybe Amazing. 15 days. Amazing. This is how yeah. humble he is. He texts me the other day and he goes, Hey Jeff, he goes, I'm not doing this because don't think like I'm, and I'm like, Steven, you could tell me to jump off a cliff. And I would probably really be debating Like there's nothing you could tell me, brother, that I wouldn't respect or take as a, and he said, you're, you're posting some stuff on your story. I don't even know what it was, whatever he said, I like did it instantly. And I said, it's done. Anything else? Just tell me. Because, you know, if someone's winning wow. it, if someone's winning at something, which is, again, if you're if you're telling people the right way to do code and the right way to discern, like you said, bro, like you said, I mean, here, I'm just bringing out the code book. A lot of people take this and they never freaking open it up, you know, yeah, exactly. and I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't been on the field in 14 years, Stephen, but I have never opened up the code book as much as I have in the past year because of people like you that are, that are getting me back and saying, wait a minute, I, I know the code, but I don't know the code. Like you need to know it at a different level. It's what we do. So the, I think that currently the, what social media gives people the best way to learn code is if you think somebody's doing something wrong and you want to call them out, out on the internet, do it but find the code reference. Exactly. That gives you, the, if, you're, if you're an apprentice, that gives you the practice of the book. It finds out if you're right or wrong. And then if the argument spirals, you know you're right. You know, you got people that just throw out on social media what their uncle taught them. Well, that doesn't matter. Right. You have to be able to find it in the book. And uh, I, I, I got a lot better. I code myself this last year on a few topics that I was rusty on just because I saw people doing it. And I didn't want to just be the guy to say, that's wrong. I wanted right. the guy to say, that's wrong because of a NEC this yep and uh it, it's been hugely helpful for me i can't imagine what it would do for apprentices that you know they don't use the book every day yeah they should but, yeah absolutely i 100 yeah. percent agree all right man well look i love the conversation can't wait to get back on with you and uh till then i guess uh my saying is we'll see you on the next one thank you very much all right brother we'll, we'll see you soon